Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 22 of my fitness database series. And again, whether or not you care about fitness, this is a database tutorial. So it doesn't matter what you're tracking. All this stuff is cool for any database that you want to build. All right, let's get into it. All righty, still working with our meal list. Now, just to bring people up to speed, I've gotten a couple of emails that are like, hey, my form doesn't look like you. What, what happened? I did a few things in the last extended cut for the members after uh, last video, part, part 21. We put the little sort buttons up here so you can sort these columns, right? And I put a filter box up here so they can type in like uh, RI and it'll just filter for things that have RI in them, okay? That's in the extended cut for the members. And I made it so you could double click down here in this empty box and it will go to a new record, but it's not right up at the top like everybody else's is. And I got to make this bigger. I always got to make this big. <laughs> it doesn't fit in the box. There, see? Yours just puts it up at the top, but it scrolls way, everything else way up. But I, so that's one of the things we fix in the extended cut. Okay, next up, we got to add the other two buttons down here for delete and requery. That's mostly just grabbing them from here with some minor modifications. So let's throw everybody in design view and grab the delete and the requery buttons. Copy those and paste them over here. Now, when you paste, they come in up top up here. So we just got to click and drag them down. And I don't think I got them both, did I? Nope, I just got the one. Mm. Copy. Paste. All right, now I got both of them. And let's resize this guy so it's the same as the other ones. Get over there like that. All right, so we got delete. We got add new. We got requery. Now, if you want to slide them over here under notes so that they both look at like they're in the same places in the bottom right corner of each form, that's up to you. I think they're fine over here. I'm trying to save myself some space because I got a small window that I record in. Uh, my monitor is obviously much larger than this, but eh, it's okay. All right, let's start with requery. That's the easy one. All right, this is just me.requery. So copy, right click, build event. And, oop, it put it's putting you down in the members only area. <laughs> Let's move that, put it up top there. Me that requery, easy enough. All right. Oh, and I almost forgot, I got it in my notes here. Um, in the sub form up top here, right, this, uh, this meal sub form, this guy right there, bring up its properties. This text box for the description is actually, oh, it's not, it's, it was named, did I fix it? Oh, I, I did. I fixed it. Okay. So your version of the, I'm like, why isn't it different? Your version of the database, if you're following along with the home game, the name was quantity, but it was still bound to description. All right. So if you didn't catch that building it yourself, just make that change. I noticed that I, I must've accidentally goofed and copied it from somewhere wrong, but it wouldn't have mattered because there was no code pointing to that field at all. So just rename it to description. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's come back down here. The delete button. Now let's take a look at the delete button in the other form. Right click, build event. All right, there's a bunch of stuff in here. And we don't need all of this. We don't need this food group combo stuff. But to make things easier, I am gonna copy this and then we'll just edit out what we don't need. All right, so back over here, let's go into this delete buttons code now. Paste that in, all right. So delete description, are you sure all this stuff is, is the same? This should be if is null meal ID, right? We don't have a food group, so we don't gotta worry about that. Get rid of that block. We still wanna me.dirty equals false, so if they're in the middle of editing, it at least gets saved. Now here's the interesting part right here. All right, this is an easy change from meal T where meal ID equals meal ID. Now, right now, we don't have cascade deletes on. Now, if you're planning on using this database as just an access database, then you can, you can delete the child records in here as well. I normally do. I normally delete these myself manually. I'll do something, whoops, I just pasted the whole thing. I'll normally do this. I'll just copy this guy and paste it in here and delete from meal detail t where meal id equals meal id 
In fact, you want to delete the details first. Put that first. Delete the, delete the child records first, then delete the parent records. And, and if you do this, then you don't have to worry about cascade deletes. Okay? But I'm going to put them on anyways. Just in case. Um, you, it's up to you if you want to. You can, you can totally leave this off and do the, the delete with the cascade delete. What's a cascade delete? Well, that is set up in the relationship. So database tool, relationships. Here's our relationship from meal to meal detail. Right, open this up and we've got referential integrity enforced and all you gotta do is check this box on here, cascade delete related records. What that means is when you delete a record from the meal table, it will delete any and all meal detail records that are belonging to this guy. All right, think of it like orders, right? If you delete an order, all of the order details go away. If you have referential integrity with cascade deletes on between, let's say, customers and orders, if you delete a customer, all of their orders go away, and that can be bad, right? So it's up to you if you want to use this. Again, I remind you, uh, referential integrity and this kind of stuff does not work if these tables are in different back-end files. So if you've got two split backend databases and you got let's say customers in one and orders in the other you can't use referential integrity there so you have to learn how to maintain stuff like that in code that's why i'm showing you both ways pick one you can do them both if you want to there's nothing wrong with having both of these you can have it ma manually manage it here and then also have it as a relationship thing too and just in case someone comes in here um and like i am also going to turn off allow deletions for the form I'm gonna leave them on down here to, to delete food items in the meal, but for the meal itself, we're gonna turn deletions off here. That way they have to use my button to delete it. Wait, did I turn it off over here? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did, okay. All right, so I'm managing it with code and we're also managing it with a cascade delete. Save it, debug compile once in a while. Let's close that, close it. Close it, open it. Let's delete happy popcorn. Let me try deleting it from here. Can't, because that's an aggregate query, right? Oops, someone's beaming in. Hold on a second. I love that. All right, can I delete happy popcorn from here? Nope, can't be deleted with this form. All right, how about deleting happy popcorn down here? Delete, are you sure? Yep. Okay, it deleted it, but we got one more thing we gotta do. This guy. Right, this needs to be refreshed too. If you close this and reopen it, okay, it's gone, but that doesn't help me. So what we also are going to do is after we requery this guy, now we need to also requery the subform up top, right? That's meal list f dot requery. And we also need to make sure to resync the two because it's gonna requery the top and it might be on a different one than the one on the bottom's on. It, it should fire the current event. Let's see, let's try it and see. All right, let's go to happy popcorn here, delete, yes. Okay, all right, I think it's gonna work without it, but you could, you could manually refire that on current event too. But I think if we add something new, like uh, junk food, junk food, and that's one other minor thing I wanna change too. After that, after that, after, in that after update event, I want to jump down here. All right, let's just put something in here. Okay, delete it. Yes. All right, I think when we do the requery, it is going to be fine, just the way it is. You could put you could put the form current event here or just call that as a function too. Either one is fine. Requerying that meal list though should sort everything out. Let's fix that after update event right here. This meal name after update event. I don't like the way that, that behaves. I want to go to this guy. Set the set the meal detail f set focus. Let's try that. So after all of this, let's see. Yeah, let's go meal detail f dot set focus. So after you put that in there, we're going to move down to the subform ready to enter the next or the first item. So if I add new junk food again tab there we go now we're now we're right down here ready to add an item now in our junk food all right 
See, it's it's every little bit that we work on counts. All right, every little thing we do is magic. Every little thing you do. No, just kidding. Uh, um, and we're gonna get there. So we got our add new, our delete, our requery. See, they're just slightly different from this one, but it helps that we've got this guy built pretty much finished. This is pretty much as I like it because now we can base other forms off of this one, right? Without doing too much. We have to reinvent the wheel every single time. All right, I'm starting to get uh, a little antsy to get the meal log going. So we're going to start that in the next video. Pretty sure. I've been waiting for it. I know I want to I want to start using that myself. I'm still I'm still using Excel for tracking my stuff. Until this is to the to a point where I can start using this for for that. So I'm going to I want to get that over myself so I can do that. Uh but that's going to do it for part 22. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 23. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.